Hello everybody, welcome back. I think it's time to get it going. So uh, today I'm going to do a couple examples about the total change theorem. Hmm? Hope you all got my emails uh, today. Sorry for any inconvenience, but I, there were some typos in the uh, in the assignment. Some stuff that I uh, that should have been in there that I forgot to put on there, and and two problems that were different in the two books that I had to change. So um, check it out; it's all correct now if you look on the class website. Um, I hope nobody did the wrong stuff or wasted any time on that. Um, the total change theorem is what I want to talk about today. Um, it says. I hope you watched the uh, video about this, but here's the punchline. Um, it says that uh, it's about the um, definite integral of a derivative of something. If you do the integral, say from a to b, of f prime of x dx, this is the total change of f of x from x equal a to x equal b. Um, the idea is this integral here is like taking the um, derivatives, if I take the derivatives which are the instantaneous rate of change of the function f and when you're doing these this integral this says a to b that looks like a 6 up there, it's a b, a to b get my b's in, whoa Get my B's in order. Um, this is, uh, when you do these integrals, at least the estimations, it's like you're adding up little bits. Uh, and what this says is if you take these instantaneous rate of changes and add up all the little bits of change, what it adds up to is the total change. All right, it makes some kind of sense, right? If you add up all the little bitty bits of changes from one moment to the next, instant from one instant to the next, what they add up to is the total change from the starting time to the ending time, something like that. All right, this is called the total change theorem. It's very useful in the real world, and it's not hard to use. Um, these, uh, in in my opinion, I don't know if you agree with me, but the homework problems for this week I think are are quite a bit easier than uh, ones that we've been doing lately. Certainly easier than say the u substitution or something like that. Um, anyway, uh, all the Problems from the last part of the assignment are word problems involving total change. So I thought I'd just do a couple of those, if that's all right. Anybody have any questions at this point about the the concept? All right, let's do it. One moment, please. Okay. Um, I have a little, I don't know if anybody cares, I have a little heater on the floor next to my seat here. Sometimes it gets too hot, so i got to lean over and turn it off. That's what I just did. A little behind-the-scenes uh, action for you. Okay, um, let's say here's a, here's a word problem about total change. Total change has to do with um, when you have the... Uh, when you know what the derivative is, you want to find the total change of the original function. So let's say I am... Let's say pushing a block or something. This is a very basic physics problem. Pushing a block, um, and of course, when you push something, when you uh, exert a force onto something, you accelerate it. You cause it to, uh, you know, start uh, moving. Say I'm pushing a block and I give it acceleration according to this formula here. A of t equals, let's say, this is made up, of course. 3 plus 4t squared, and the units, might as well put units, centimeters per second squared, let's say, all right? Um, let's say this is the acceleration that I'm giving to this block. Now, everybody knows, you don't have to know anything about physics to do this problem, except for this one very simple fact, but everybody knows this, is that the acceleration is equal to the derivative of velocity, right? Um, Derivative of velocity, that's like how fast the velocity is changing, and that's that's what acceleration means, right? Acceleration means uh, how quickly the speed is changing. So, um, anyway, the question, I haven't given you the question yet, it is, uh, estimate 
the total change in velocity from, let's do time t equals 3 to t equals, um, how about 17? How do you like that? Do I like that? No, I'm at 15. Sorry. Using rectangles on the right endpoints with n equals 6. All right. Estimate the total change in velocity from this time to this time. So starting at 3 seconds, going up to 15 seconds, what's the total amount that the velocity changed during that duration of time? All right. And I said, to do the estimation using rectangles on the right endpoints. Now you could use the left endpoints or the midpoints or the trapezoid rule or the Simpsons rule. Whatever you are told to do, you do it. All right. The total change in the velocity. All right. That's what you are. Um, that's what you are trying to uh, measure. The total change, according to what we said before, the total change in v is equal to the integral of v prime of t dt, right? What I said up here, the total change of f of x would be the integral of f prime. So if I want the total change of v, the velocity, that is the integral of v prime. Uh, v prime, of course, is the acceleration. Uh, I should put boundaries here, integral from 3 to 15, just because I said so. I said from time 3 to time 15. This is 3 to 15 of my acceleration, right? And that is 3 plus 4t squared dt. So we need to estimate that definite integral at the end there. And how we do that, we do with the rectangle. So this is like what we did uh, last time. I'm going to begin by drawing my interval out here. It's the interval from 3 to 15. And I need to divide this into six pieces. I guess it'll be like that. Um, any common sense out there? Can can you tell me um, where the where's the next point after the three? In order to divide into six, what should it be? Anybody there? Five. Five. The next number is five. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, and then seven. So these go go up by two every time. Yeah, it works out. They go up by two every time. Um, uh, I've, if you recall from last time, I um, I said if you can't for some reason make the common sense compute in your head, you can always figure this out. Delta x is uh, b minus a over n, right? The b and the a are the two endpoints, so it's 15 minus three divided by n, which is six. That would be 12 over 6, which is 2, which means the width of each of these guys will be 2, and that's how you could figure out that the next one would be 5, even if you didn't know uh, it was going to be 5. All right? Or you can just, if, if you can divide it up in your head, that's fine too. All right? Anyway, what's my answer? I can pretty much jump to the answer, but uh, I hope you remember how to do this rectangles thing. Rectangles on the right endpoints, it said. That means I'm going to choose these numbers to plug into the function. And what we do, rewrite the delta x on the outside, which is 2, and then followed by those numbers, each one of them plugged into my function. So I'm going to do like f of 5 plus f of 7 plus etc. The last one is f of 15, where these f's indicate that function right there inside the uh, integral sign. And you should not take the derivative or do the antiderivative or anything like that. You just directly plug into that function. And so my final answer, don't leave it like this because you, you want to um, show me that you know what the f's mean. The f means that function inside. You get 3 plus 4 times 5 squared plus the next one. Yeah, 3 plus 4 times 7 squared plus the next one, etc. The last one, 3 plus 4 times 15 squared. And that's how we do it. You can put in your calculator if you want, or don't. On the test, I would expect you to leave it like that. Anybody got questions about that? All right, this is how we do the total change. Now, this one is the total change where you were just given a formula for something. I told you an equation. Um, 
The ones on the homework from this section, mostly they don't give you an equation. They give you either a graph or just a list of function values. So we should probably talk about one like that. I copied one from my book, which I have right over here. I didn't want to write all these details out. This is a word problem about automobile accidents. The graph at the top of the next column, which I moved down here, shows the number of fatal automobile accidents in California for various years. All right, estimate the total number of accidents. So here we have um, the graph tells you accidents per year. So that's the the rate of change, the rate of the accidents, right? Accidents per year. Um, your job is to estimate the total number of accidents in this eight-year period using rectangles of width two years. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing um, as the you know what we just did, the total change thing. You should figure out what your interval is. Now with this one, since you've got the graph right there, it's not so hard to decide. But they said the eight-year period from 2003 to 2011. So my interval will look like this. And it says using rectangles of width two years. So you don't, you don't even have to figure that out. They, to, they straight up told you 2007, 2009. And I, I guess this this diagram is not to scale, but those are the uh, those are the points because it said use rectangles with width two years. All right. Now this one doesn't say um, whether you're supposed to use the left or the right. That's because this is one of those problems in the book where they wrote they wrote the detailed instructions like way at the beginning of a bunch of problems. Anyway, they what you're supposed to do in this problem is. Do it on the left end points, and then do it on the right end points. And then they say also take the average of the two answers, which I don't really care about the average, but let's do it on the left end points and do it on the right end points. So the left end points, how do we do it? We pick these guys, right? Just those four. And it's going to be, I begin, um, you know, it's always a bunch of stuff added together with a delta x on the outside. What am I going to use for delta x in this case? Somebody shout it out. Or show me the fingers. The delta x is always the width of these little guys. What do you say? Is it two again? It is two, yes. <coughs> That's a symptom right there. Bless you. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, it is 2. So I put the 2 out there, right? That's my delta x. And then I'm going to plug these values in, right? f of 2003, f of 2005, f of 2007, f of 2009. Now, if I had an equation, I would just plug those numbers into the equation. We do not have an equation. Instead, all we get is this graph. But the graph, you know, they have helpfully labeled these points for us on the graph. These are the Fs, right? F of 2003 means you look at 2003 on the x-axis and you look at what is the y value right there. And that's what it is, 3726. If it were a graph with, like an ordinary graph, they wouldn't label the points and you'd have to just kind of guess what the value is. But they're trying to help you out by writing these little numbers. Those are the y values at each of these points. So F of 2003, sorry, it doesn't quite fit on the screen. There we go. Oops. 2 times F of 2003 is 3726 plus F of 2005 is 3822 plus F of 2007 is 3557. F of 2009 is... 2805. And that's going to be my answer. You can add them up on your calculator if you want to, but that's how we do it. All right. Any questions about that? This was the left endpoints. The right so, endpoints. Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Um, so this is just like an overall question about the loss that the older videos made you watch the whole lot. Yeah. Am I right in saying that these are pretty much that they're comp that all trying to computate to compute this same thing apart from this one. This one's trying to get obviously the, the total change. But they're all basically in the same like category of of math and trying to compute change, right? Yes, I would say so. Yeah. They're all about computing the the total change of something. 
I mean, the, like what I was talking about last time was purely like abstract in the in the in the uh, context of finding the area of a weird shape. Um, in the real world, finding areas of weird shapes is not all that useful to in most situations. But this business about finding how how something is changing is super useful um, all the time. Uh, so, um, and actually this business about not, like in this problem here, I didn't have an equation. All I had was this chart or these numbers, the like the red numbers. Really, the chart is irrelevant in this problem. You don't need to see the line. All you need is those red numbers that I circled up there. Um, that is a much more realistic situation in the real world than using equations because when things are changing in the real world usually they don't obey equations they are just changing you know like a stock price changes just however it changes it doesn't have an equation instead of working with equations all you get to work with are a bunch of numbers like a bunch of data that's actually a more realistic situation in the real, in the real world um, these days than doing derivatives and antiderivatives of formulas usually you don't have formulas unless you're doing physics or something there's there's equations for everything but in uh, other contexts not so you just get the numbers all right um can we let's just do the right end points just just for for fun to finish this off so that was the left end points how about the right end points it's very similar i just use different ones when i do the right end points i still get a two outside uh, but this time I am going to use, you know, uh, the, these ones here, the blue ones, not including 2003, and yes, including 2011. So it's going to be f of, can I just write 05 plus f of 07 plus f of 09 plus f of 2011. And then what are those f values? They are just you read these numbers up here. Make sure you read the right ones, but it's going to be 2 first uh, times 3822 plus 3557 plus 2805 plus 2628. And that's the answer. And again, you can add those on your calculator if you want to. Or don't. I don't care. If this was on a test, I would expect you to leave that as the answer. All right. Uh, now, when you're doing these um, on the homework, you'll notice there's some questions um, in this section which don't even give you a graph at all. All they give you is a list of numbers. But that's sort of even better. You know, like in this example, there there's no need to look at this graph, really, apart from this list of numbers. That's the only thing that matters. And so if all you're given is a list of numbers, that's that's totally fine. You just use those numbers as, as these uh, function values. All right. Any other questions about that one?